Cheers. Happy day eight. Happy Friday. Floss tube. Day eight of our holiday countdown Vlogmas Flossmas stitch along daily video get together. Today is day eight. Let's open up our packages if we have them today and uh, see what's inside. And here we have day eight. Sommelier. So we have the most absolutely beautiful wine color in our in our openings today. And uh, this is one that I am definitely, definitely going to make sure that Carrie puts into our regular collection because it is just the most stunning wine red color. Absolutely beautiful. So that's the floss for day eight, sommelier. Our card today, Jacob has given us a song. So if you head over to his YouTube channel, you'll be able to hear what he has available for us today. And I love the artwork that he's used today. He's given us a skater, a skating peasant by Peter Jantz Quantz from around 1634 to 1638. And it's just a lovely print. All right, so um, just a heads up on the stitching today. We are going to be working our way all the way down to the bottom of the chart. On your chart, you're going to notice that there are some single stitches all along the bottom row, and then one little motif in the middle. I am going to advise that you not stitch those stitches today. Hold off a little bit. Everything else, we can go ahead. The, um, the motifs that are on the side are a mirror image of our two vines that we have here. We're going to be stitching those down the side. Count carefully. Uh, one, two. We also have uh, some extra stitching, just a couple of stitches to add into here using the sommelier floss. But those stitches that are at the bottom, we're, at least that's my, I am going to not be stitching them today. I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm not going to tell you what day, but I'm going to leave those off for today. Okay, so there it is day eight. Let's get stitching. So I thought I would show you what I was up to today. I wanted to make a little gift uh, for my niece for Christmas. They won't watch these videos, so I'm not giving anything away. Um, and I, she, she is a cross stitcher and I thought that I would make Darling Starling I'm going to use a 14 count Ada and I've got Legendary and Hussy. So I'm going to do, I'm, I think I'm going to frame it so that she can hang it in her room, but it's small and if I get to it, I should be able to stitch it up fairly quickly. And I'm not going to be seeing them until the end of the month. So wish me luck because we're going to kit these up um, for the shop. I thought I would show you the different counts because these different counts of Ada, this is our razzle dazzle Ada that is discontinued. Um, and the counts are different. You can tell the 14 count, a little more modeling and the modeling is darker. The 16 count is similar in shade to the 14. So yeah, I'd say the 14 and the 16 are pretty close. But the 18 count, and this is typical of 18 count Ada, it just seems to be a little bit, uh, it just doesn't take the dye the same way, so it's a little bit lighter, but same floss, Hussy and Legendary on there. Looks pretty good. Give you a close up of Hussy, it's hard to get the true color. Let's see if I can bring it down here. There we go, look at that. Okay, so it's a little later in the day, and I'm telling you, this is addictive. Look, somebody's having fun out there. 14 count Ada, it is so blooming fast, zoom all the way across. 
That's the width of the chart. Two strands of floss, 14 count Ada. Fun, super fun. So I, you know, I, cause when I started this, I'm like, mm, it's very Valentine-y, I know that. But I intend it to be a Christmas gift for my niece. But then I'm like, you know, if she's not gonna know about it. So if I don't finish it in time for Christmas, I will send it to her for Valentine's Day. So again, the chart is Darling Starling. And this is, this is a pink Ada that Carrie died last year um, that we had called, it was in the shop as Razzle Dazzle. And then I think, um, you know, it was unlisted for a while because we took it to retreat. So this is the last little bit of it that I have. They're all pre-cuts. I've got only a couple of 18 counts, six of a yards. The rest are all quarter yard cuts. And we've put them all together as uh, curated kits. There's a section on our website that is, um, I, I can't remember what it's called, Curated Kits by Caroline or something like that. Generally where I'll put things in that I'm, that I'm stitching if it's not something that we have a huge amount of. So, isn't it cute? I have to say, because somebody was asking me the other day about white stitches and, sorry, construction noise, trucks are going by all day long there's nothing i can do about it the sidewalk stuff that i was showing over the last couple of days that's directly in front of our of our workshop here at Evertote. so it is what it is we're just so grateful that we think that things are starting to wrap up for the winter so fingers crossed somebody was asking about white stitches and they didn't feel that they looked as good as all of their other stitching and was this a common thing and yes most of you who um, have been stitching for a long time stitching white stitches you know that that's a very common complaint um so a couple of ways that you can uh alleviate that make it a little bit better if it's a concern for you because some people i don't often really take too much notice as long as it looks good enough um, you know, from back here, right? Because my my friend Kathy, uh, who was the owner of my old LNS, I talk about her all the time. My friend Kathy, and uh, she used to, you know, I would I would go in to the shop and I would I would bring my stitching and I'd say, you know, I just I don't like how this looks and I'm not happy with this and this doesn't look right, and she would gently take my stitching from me and she'd step back. And then she'd hold it up and then she'd say, what do you think now? Because it's, this is the perspective that you're going to have generally when you're done, right? You're not, you have to remember, we spend so much time, well, especially me with my vision problem. This is how I stitch, okay? So my glasses are off and I, this is approximately how close the fabric is to my face. It's pretty close, right? So I'm staring at this for days. You're staring at your stitching for days and days and days. Of course, you're going to notice every single small minor flaw, right? But when you step back and so, for example, all of the pieces that are on the wall behind me, do you notice that the stitches are not railroaded or lying flat or, you know, there's, there's half a stitch somewhere where it shouldn't be or you chose the wrong floss by accident, but you decided not to rip it out? You don't really notice it when you're a little bit separated from it by both time <laughs> and distance. So that's the first way is, can you live with it if you're not staring at it from three inches away? The other thing you can do is something called railroading. If you've never heard of that, it's the term used um, if you're using two strands of floss where when you, uh, before you bring your needle down back into the linen to take your downwards uh, stitch, you separate the two strands of floss with the, with the needle. You bring your needle through those two strands of floss and then you bring it down into the fabric, effectively taking your needle directly through those two, two strands of floss before you bring it down into the fabric, which then helps those two strands lay flat together. You can railroad some people railroad both legs of the cross, so they'll railroad the bottom leg and then they'll railroad the top leg again. Some people don't worry about the bottom leg and they only railroad the top leg. And some people don't railroad at all. That would be me. 
I think, you know, sometimes I do it, um, but I find generally most of the time I'm sort of massaging the top leg with my needle if I'm not, if it's not laying super flat, I'll just massage it a little bit with my needle as the, you know, thread is lying down, I'll just massage it a little bit. The thing you can do is there's something called a laying tool. So if you're working on a project that you, I don't know, want to enter in a fair or you're giving a, as a gift to another needleworker who you know you're, you admire, who their stitching is, you know, prim, primo. Uh, laying tool is it's a, a picture, something that looks like an awl, you know, those things that punch holes in leather. Looks like an awl and you hold it with your hand that's not pulling the thread down and then you lay the thread over the laying tool as you pull it through the fabric and that helps the threads you know it it lies them flat as you go so little tips tricks um there's always there's always something new to learn isn't there but how fun i'm telling you i haven't you know i haven't stitched on 14 count ada You know, I honestly can't even remember the last time I stitched on 14 count Ada. I think, I think actually it was for my niece, Clara, same, same niece when, before she was born and she's now 13. So before she was born, I stitched some animals for her nursery and I stitched them on a 14 count Ada, but it wasn't a hand dye. It was um, just uh, undyed natural uh, white and so white and Ada is not natural because it comes from the factory. So it wasn't a natural color, like an, like a, do you know what I mean? Like the ecru color, it was white. But when you put fabric through the dyeing process, it tends to shrink it up a little bit, right? So when I stitched on the undyed Ada, I did use three strands of floss. This is 14 count and I only used two strands. And I think you'll agree with me that it looks the coverage, coverage is pretty darn good. So yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with it. Fun, so fun. So anyway, will I get it done in time for Christmas? I don't know, it's not very big, but there's so many other things I wanna stitch as well. So I don't know, we'll take it as it comes. No pressure, I'm not putting any pressure on myself to finish it by Christmas, but I am having fun with it, so. We'll, we'll see. I'm also not trying to push Valentine's Day. <laughs> I know I recognize this is totally Valentine's Day. It's just, I really think that she will like these colors. That's why I picked it. So, yeah. Okay, so I, uh, I better get back to work. I'll check in with you a little later today. So I thought I would show you, I have done half of the stitching that I'm gonna be doing today. On this project so there are the stitches that need to be filled in in here and then ignore what I said previously about this being um, that in reverse because of course it's not I should have looked more closely at the pattern before I said that that is the motif right there and it's been carefully counted pretty sure it's right I counted it a number of times and again I'm gonna do the exact same thing over on the right hand side and I am going to completely ignore those stitches that are at the bottom. I'm going to save those for another day. So there we have it. I will put in a photo tonight uh, before I edit this video of my completed daily stitches. Just a reminder that the auctions, uh, two auctions today for Muscular Dystrophy Canada are going to be going live on my Instagram page, which is at Evertotes. There are two auctions. Uh, the first one is the Ornaments Galore bag set that comes with the thread bed and the floss pack. And we have added two charts into that um, item. One is the Teresa Cogut, uh, the sheep with the, the, sh the sweater on. Oh, it's so sweet. I wanna stitch that. The other one that I wanna stitch as well, the Brenda Gervais home pattern. That is the first item lot. And then the second item up for bids are three lavender and lace charts that are paired with a large flat bag set from us at Evertote. 
You can find those items. They will be listed at noon Eastern Standard Time on the Instagram page. And I think the auctions both start at $25 Canadian. Bidding is in Canadian dollars. Just keep that in mind when you're placing a bid. That is factoring in that you are going to be um, making a donation to a Canadian charity. You can pay in whatever currency you wish, but the auction, the, the money that will win the bid is going to be factored into Canadian funds. Um, so minimum bids are a dollar, but you can bid what you want. And we'll leave the auction up until next Friday. Auction will be live for an entire week, and then next Friday we'll have two new items up for bid. Thank you very much. The other thing I wanted to let you know, I have just made the donation to the Anova Women's Shelter that is right down the road from us here from the Evertote Workshop here in London, Ontario, Canada. A huge thank you, first of all, to Hannah for designing and providing the chart that was the catalyst for this uh, fundraiser. We have raised $396. So of course I bumped it up to 400. I've made the donation. I'm going to include a screenshot of my tax receipt here so that you can see it. Thank you so much to everyone who purchased the Matryoshka dolls chart and has allowed us to make this donation at this, at this time of year, especially they need money all year round, but um, I think closer to the holidays, it's a, it's definitely always a time of greater need. So thank you so much to everyone. I will be making the donation to the Church of the Nazarene uh, early next week, probably Monday or Tuesday. I still have to calculate those numbers, but I know that uh, they're also going to be getting a sizable donation from us again. Thanks to you. So thank you again. Here's that receipt.